Hey guys, welcome back to Celerity Technology. Tonight I have a special unboxing. I'm going to be unboxing my own boxes. How many people on YouTube can say that? I have two, two different versions. One is uh, 12 volt, the other one is 5 volt. And without further ado, see as you can see, they come in your kind of standard clamshell boxes, I think what they're called. And um, we have a 5 volt thermal take RGB and a 12 volt. The 5 volt is actually kind of what inspired me for this project. And they both take, you know, your, they take can take 5 volt addressable in, but this one's actually specifically made for um, 5 volt analog well this is specifically made for 12 volt analog the 5 volt analog came wrong because um, it was actually inspiration for this whole project because I had these RGB fittings and they had a manual controller with only one channel so all your RGB fittings would look the same and this is kind of what it looked like it's I don't know how well you can see it in this video but um, you can see the red going through there's blue and white but um the idea is i wanted to address and control each of the rgb fittings and um i couldn't do that with thermal takes um stock um setup so i sought up to create my own and um the thermal take rgb fittings use five volt analog they're not digital they're analog and i wanted to address them so i actually used i have 12 fittings here and i use three decks for it so without further ado here else in the unboxing so I don't think many people actually unbox their own stuff and I don't know if this would actually be considered um, open box after this so in the box you have your little little kind of document here that you know gives you a warning that says make sure that your stuff is turned off when you plug it in that way it'll fry there's a chance that you could reverse the polarity if you try plugging things in wrong um, they can still make contact even though you try to idiot proof it. Um, then we have some bubble wrap here. A nice ESD bag and the, this one thing I found out while doing this, so the silver ESD bags actually are, well they're actually the only ESD bag. Uh, they prevent against, um, if you get an electric charge, it um, this acts kind of as a Faraday cage. So it's better to have it for um, uh, for devices and then the pink stuff like the pink ones that you see so uh, those are just anti-static bags so anyway so this is the 5 volt version and they have these kind of fan like headers which um, uh, makes sense because the um, thermal take RGB um, fittings have uh, like fan like headers um, it you have two different um, inputs. You can have it connected to your computer, motherboard. Um, there's some controllers out there that use this, but um, most people will use it with their motherboard. I also am a big fan of Corsair, so um, I have an input and an output for that, as well as an output for the for the digital one right there. Um, so each one of these means you have four different channels, and you can address them separately. So I can put um, you know, I can have red on this one, blue, green, and white, you know, and that's how I kind of get the flow. And I think it looks really cool like that. And it allows me to control my analog RGB devices through um, IQ, which is, you know, a favorite tool. Actually, um, the name RGB DAC is kind of a, a nod to Corsair, who I beta test for in my spare time. So, inside the, the 12 volt version, and I will be putting a new cover on these, and some wonderful person will be getting it. It's the same document. Um, in this, you, you don't want to exceed about 50 LEDs for 5 volt total, and because the 5 volt rail share, is shared on this old 5 volt um, analog and the digital, you don't want to exceed 50 LEDs. You know, just as a general recommendation. I mean, you can, but you know, you, could, you blow. You always risk the chance of blowing a fuse. So this is the same type of ESD bag, and then we have, um, as you can see, I have um, a gold um, uh, immersion nickel gold for the uh, pads, and I just took advantage of that for the name right there. I thought that would look kind of cool. Um, these come with your headers for your 12 volt. These are nice and tight. My 
beta, the beta versions that I made um, actually were a bit looser. So these are really tight. They're not going to fall out that easily. Um, but again, the, the way the connector is, it will hold it tight. But the more you plug it in and out, eventually um, uh, they start to loosen. That's just the mechanics of it. So just don't sit there pulling it in and out. Um, so this is what they look like. I do have um, I do have standoffs. These are made out of nylon. And these things can actually stack. So you can stack them and then mount them to a to a hard drive caddy. The, the holes are slightly bigger than the um, than the standoffs, so you can actually move them a little bit as needed. Um, so we have a floppy drive connector, and m most people might, you know, get scared of that. But you know, in honesty, that I spent a lot of time and deep thoughts trying to figure out, um, you know, how I should power it, and that was the best one. Uh, for the 12 volt version. You can still have 50 um, digital RGB LEDs coming out of this. This is per board um, for 5 volt. And for the 12 volt, you can have about 150 LEDs for the for the 12 volt. So you can put quite a bit on it. Um, you just don't want to really see that number or you might blow some of the fuses. And I mean, these boards are actually manufactured identically. And... I actually soldered all these these headers myself and then there's just a simple jumper right here, a solder jumper that I used to switch the voltage between uh, 12 and 5 volts. Um, so well, why don't we give it a give it a shot so um, to kind of show you guys how it works. So I'm going to plug this, um, Just these are some demo strips that I just kind of soldered together. So I'm um, really excited, I'm finally going finally um, have about I think it, I did the final assembly for these and so let's see here and um, I think I did about 30 of them so here's a it's connected to a Corsair Lighting No Pro and I need to get the, the power out so I'm just going to use the floppy drive power for this one so most, one of the reasons is because I was running out of space on the board to put us like a SATA power, and uh, the floppy drive is still widely available. Um, the power connector is so, as you can see, the wonderful little. It's kind of hard to sh show on this camera, so you know the good old trick with the um, even that. Wow, the white. I guess maybe the white balances off. So. Uh, let me switch to my desktop to show you kind of how I can actually let me plug this one in as well. So we have, so you can have a digital signal coming in and basically what happens is this is 10 LEDs being addressed and this would be 11, 12, 13, 14 and this would be 15 16 and so on so that's how it addresses it so basically occupies the four channels prior to it and you can connect the DAX to each other if you want so let's um, see I'm using IQ and I can switch you know all the different you know static colors and they match so you know turn it off or disable instant lighting altogether and again, this unfortunately the camera doesn't do justice. I mean, it's always hard to pick up um, LEDs on camera. Let me see. Maybe if I flip it over like this. Nah, a bit bright for the camera. So let me sh show you the 5 volt. So unfortunately, I do not actually have a, um, all, all of my RGB fittings are on my PC, and I did not want to take it apart for that. So I bought this um, this 5 volt RGB strip for your TV. It plugs into your USB, and I chopped it apart, and <laughs> that's what I use for my testing, the validation for 5 volt, because, I mean, all they really do is just switch the resistors in there, most likely. Okay. So when taking off that strip, I'm going to plug that strip into this one. And then I have another K2 
table over here. So the input is going to go from here to here. And then as soon as I plug this in, you're going to see, again, don't plug this in when it's live, especially with these headers right here. That's the main reason because even though, um, uh, you know, it's kind of keyed with that missing pen, uh, the, in all reality, you can still potentially make contact and reverse the polarity. I actually prevented 5 volt. I, I don't have the, the 5 volt on these connected to anything. So 5 volts just supplied by uh, this power source. So it's not coming into the board just as a kind of a, another preventative measure. So as you can see, that's here's a 5 volt working. Again, these are 5 volt LEDs and with a little, you know, connector that's bigger that can fit it. And these would go on. You know, your thermal take RGB fittings, so red, green, blue, white. And let's, let me try to go, let me see if I can get sequential going. So lighting channel, add, let's go to sequential. Those always look kind of the coolest because I can show you how lighting, oops, I'm using lighting channel too, of course. And you can't see a lot of what I'm doing, so we're sequential. There we go. So that's kind of one of the cooler ways to show exactly how it works. So, I mean, if you use like a software like IQ, you're going to... It's not going to see everything the proper way. So, actually, let me go into the settings and um, switch it to two strips. So as you can see, only two strips are now lit up on this strip. And what that means is because I have four, I set it up for two strips and there's 10 LEDs in each strip. Um, because I have four LED channels split between these two DACs, they, this strip only comes up as two because it thinks there's 10, there's 20 LEDs total. So, and you can, I'll just add three. So. There we go. Um, I did do a bit of data, beta testing, and you know this is an old, from an older video. This is a white prototype, and um, I mean these are really fun if you have like you know older um, addressable LEDs that you want to connect. I mean it will work with you know your motherboard. It will work with um, you can take a digital signal from your motherboard from different controllers, um, Corsair Q, and because Corsair doesn't have a have analog um, an analog controller another reason why I wanted to do this and so it was a fun project I've learned a lot um, if you're interested in buying one of these um, the, the MSRP is $39.99 um, and it's being sold by Pirate Dog Tech who is, has an eBay store and there's also modmymods.com um, great local um, mod shop here in town and I have them packaged up and I'm going to be delivering them to them. I just have to actually just repack these and um, reassemble them. I actually um, did QA testing and I think I QA'd 35 of them and the last one was the only one that had a little issue and I fixed it with a little bit of solder. That was kind of impressive. I was impressed by the yield rate. My beta tests, the beta, like the ones I beta tested and hand soldered everything didn't go I did not have that type of yield rate, but these were machine um, assembled, all the SMDs, which are surface mounted devices on there. The through hole are the little headers. Um, they actually soldered the power and the Corsair style while I did these four and these four myself. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments. Um, this was kind of a unboxing, a guide, how to use it, and you know, all the different things. I mean, I can also use this with, um, like, you know, potentially one of the guys I think is using it for his um, GPU. So he's plugging his GPU into one of these because some of them do use um, the 12 volt. Um, people can use it to use, control, like, their EK water blocks that uses analog RGB. So a lot of different things and gives you control and can allow you to address different things. So you can actually have much longer strips. You know, I set up to, like, I think it was 150 LEDs for this one, and that's due to the fuses I put in there because I don't want people to you know put too much uh, current through these um, and damage it. Um, 
but there's so much potential here. You know, I'm thinking about even trying to control my I.O. cover and also my chipset LEDs um, with one of these. Um, again, we do have a Discord if any of you guys want to check it out. Um, thank you again very much for taking time to watch this video. Check out modmymods.com and Pirate Dogs Tech um, eBay store. I'll put a link for both of them in this in, in the comments for this. Um, and feel free to subscribe if you're interested. Have a wonderful day.